Good morning everyone! Uh, today is Thursday and I'm getting ready to head out to an event that is starting today in Copenhagen. It's called Three Days of Design and it will be on from today, tomorrow and it ends on Saturday. This is the first time that I'm actually going. Last year because of the lockdowns I didn't manage to see anything. So I'm super excited actually to, to do it this year. I'll be taking you with me so I hope that you enjoy. We started this amazing building that used to accommodate Copenhagen's post office. It dates back to 1912 and was recently transformed into a luxury hotel. We're here for a presentation in one of the suites by a company that designed all the showers and mixers in the hotel. For this particular project, they collaborated with the jewelry brand Shambhala to create the handles for the mixers. They were all custom made and it took about a year to get just this one detail right. They also showed us their new designs. The artwork for this year's Three Days of Design was created by Ilsa Crawford. The second stop was at the dedicated space where they had design talks happening in the backyard. Unfortunately, most of them were in Danish. There was, however, an interesting exhibition inside the building, which is unique in its own way. It's the Lapidarium of Kings and it's home to 300 statues and sculptures of the royal family. Quite a backdrop for a furniture exhibition. On my way to the next event, I stopped by framing exhibition. There were a few interesting companies and bespoke pieces, but the item that caught my attention was a sustainable shower by Orbital Systems. It collects and filters the water that normally goes into the drain so you can reuse it and take a long shower with a clean conscience. It is said to save up to 90% of the water and 80% of the energy used to heat it up. My next stop was the house of Finjur. A 
apart from buying nice furniture, you can also see some drawings from the famous designer and architect. A glass of wine later and we're off. Tableau is a really cool floral shop, if I can even call it that. The arrangements are a true work of art and they recently started to make artistic vases as well. Seriously, you need to check out some of the installations they've done for events and other clients. Takt is a relatively new Danish brand. Their focus is on creating sustainable furniture and in just a couple of years they have a number of awards and certifications, including B Corp. They are super sweet too. Quick subway ride, and we are in Norham. If you've watched my previous videos, then you probably recognize this building. I'm gonna leave a link down below if you're curious. The neighborhood is currently undergoing huge development, so don't mind the construction sites. I promise there's quite a few fancy brands already here. The first one is the Aldo, which is a hotel, a restaurant, slash cafe, a concept store and home to the furniture brand menu. It was actually created by their former CEO, the space was designed by Norm Architects and the creative director for the brand identity was the co-founder of Kinfolk. So basically a pretty cool space. Today is also the opening of Vitra's showroom in Copenhagen, which happened to be just a couple of blocks away. I have to admit, it was pretty nice to sit down with a glass of wine, music, cool people and just take a moment to enjoy the view. Our last stop for the day is at Stack 2. This is basically a bunch of shipping containers turned into office spaces.
Perhaps the coolest part of this harbor area is the crane, which is, yes, a former coal crane that has been turned into an exclusive luxury hotel. On the second floor you have a big meeting or event space. And on top there is a bedroom and a spa. The next day started with an early meeting at Anchor & Co. They specialize in lighting solutions and we spoke about the importance of dynamic light. We all know how much light color and intensity affects our mood at different times of day and how easy it is to screw up our natural body rhythms. The company worked on a super interesting project at Copenhagen International School and together with the architects created different lighting scenarios warmer and soft when the task involved creativity, colder when concentration was needed. The teachers can completely transform the mood with just the click of a button. They have also worked on world-famous restaurants Noma and Alchemist and have created custom-made solutions for them. Like this light from Alchemist which illuminates only the plate in front of you and nothing else. We also stopped by Frama. Frama is a multidisciplinary design studio. They work on interiors, furniture, design items, even fragrance and cosmetics. They have also collaborated with my beloved Monaco in the past and their space is located in this old pharmacy, which you have to admit is pretty cool. During three days of design there was a collaboration with a Danish designer that creates biodegradable textiles from seaweed, wax and colors them with only natural pigments. Before continuing on we decided to stop by next door and get some food and coffee. The space is called Apotec 57 and I believe it's owned by the same design studio. If you come here, I can definitely recommend the croissants stuffed with miso caramel. One of the main exhibitions during three days of design takes place in this building right next to the marble church. There's a lot of showrooms and different brands in here, so just enjoy walking through it. Apart from the cool furniture, tiles and hardware brands, there were a couple of rooms styled by the Danish magazine Arc Journal. It's one of my personal favorites and the spaces they created did not disappoint.
right across the street, there's a bow famous for its wood cabinets. There were so many other places that we wanted to stop by, but it was pretty hard to fit everything into just three days. What we couldn't miss, however, was the opening of Norman Copenhagen's new showroom. The building used to be a printing house in the 30s, and these reinforced concrete beams used to carry the weight of the heavy machinery. I love how they preserved the original features and combined them with mirrored walls and beautiful furniture. The last place for the day was VIP, which is famous for its paddle beans, but also creates gorgeous kitchens made of oak and aluminium. The third and final day began with a terrific talk about regenerative business and what's to come after a circular economy at the Design Museum. I will leave a link to the talk down below in case you want to rewatch it. The museum is actually undergoing a major renovation, but there was still a small exhibition in the foyer about sustainable design practices. From there we went to Louis Poulsen. We were in such a hurry to catch the discussion about the new classics, but it was only Danish, so that was a bummer.
The showroom is located in a former Danish naval base, together with the studio and firm living on the other side. The studio opened just recently and its main goal is to combine leading Danish and Italian furniture brands under one roof. We had to stop by from living as well, and there was a super cute farmer's market outside. They also had some design talks in the backyard and a showcase of their innovative products in regards to sustainability. A quick bike ride and we are back at the Marble Church. Vormland is a Danish architecture and design studio that focuses on kitchens that are easy to assemble, take apart and redesign. One of their most recent ventures is the transformation of these two old garages into guest houses. The bedroom is on the first floor with a tucked away bathroom. And on the second floor you have a kitchen and a small living area with a balcony. We also did a quick run to a couple of my favorite spots in the city. Louis Row Gallery was transformed into this mystical forest.
post Tian was filled with design classics, as always. This is it guys, the end of our 3 day design adventure. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more design content. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!